I wanted to make a follow along video for the setup guide that I have on my GitHub over here. Um, we're just going to be walking through the process of setting up this bash line editor. Um, it's going to give us some enhanced auto completion and syntax highlighting to kind of upgrade our terminal a little bit. Uh, I have the official repo right here pulled up. This is going to be the one. Um, definitely recommend going through their manual, their Q&A, and really just their README as well. Uh, if you have any kind of questions or issues that you run into, they have done a pretty good job of um, documentation and explaining things as well. Um, so before we get into the actual guide, I'm sure you're probably wondering what a, this bash line editor even does. Um, and I have a quick little explanation here. So a line editor is what's going to handle the typing, editing, and navigation within a terminal. So stuff like going here um, to use arrow keys to see command history or jumping between words and inline editing. Um, that's what that does. So Bash uses GNU readline as their default line editor and comes with limited functionality. Obviously, it was really just designed to work. Um, so we're going to kind of add some more features in there um, for our general use um, by sourcing the script into our Bash RC, and that's effectively going to replace um, readline as our active line editor. So. The actual process is not too complicated. Um, we're just going to come over here, go ahead and paste this script. Um, it doesn't take too long to download. And then from there, we're going to make sure that we successfully have it cloned. Uh, and yes, oops, let me put it, make it a little easier to see. Um, so we successfully have this cloned. And we will get into there. And there we go. But uh, before we're able to actually source it or use it, we're going to have to compile. And we can do that by running this make command. Um, clear. And you'll see, if you notice here, this out directory was not there before. And um, that is going to be what actually holds our script right here. So I recommend grabbing your file path. Um, that way you will be able to source the script um, in your when you implement it into the the uh, bash rc that i have now that we have uh, successfully cloned and compiled um, we will now move on to the step three which is just setting up our um, our actual script so i have it here um, under this and all you need to do is come here and we will edit it. So as you can see, I have a blank one. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste that. Make sure everything is there. And I'll go over a little more detail, um, kind of what everything does as well. So go ahead and save that. And yep, yep, yep. So to explain um, a little bit more detail about what um, you know the script that I have actually does I uh, have this laid out for us so the first part of the script is the blesh integration um, and the key components are going to be to make sure that you're using this no attach um, let me pull it up right here so we can compare yep so right here this um, no attach is important to have um, because it's going to help us to avoid any conflicts. Um, as we said, we're basically replacing readline as our line editor, so you want to make sure that everything in this script runs before you come down here and attach. So, moving on, I did a couple of cleanups as far as like visual output. The base configuration of it has it where, for instance, if you're typing, your whole command line is encased in a white box similar to this. So I just came in here and, um, well, over here, this set color face, um, changing the foreground value to gray and underline as well so that you'll see that um, once we do it. And then equally, the syntax error was uh, a red box 
Um, so I just changed that to being grayed out. Over here, we'll go to prompt coloring. Uh, what we're doing here is using tput as a command line utility that interacts with the terminal and sets um, uses the set AF to grab a text color based off the corresponding color values you see here where I have the get color set to whatever and they will default to these values if they cannot find one of these colors um, and you can tweak that to your liking as well moving on we are going to this prompt override section um, I just found that it was easier to disable the default prompt override that was coming with the script so I opted to do this um, which everything that as far as like the language that I was using can be found in their um, template folder um, and this I encourage you to read through as well It'll give you kind of options for tweaking settings and stuff like that um, it's, pretty, it's pretty lengthy though so uh, you can take some time to get through that. Um, coming back to this though, um, I wanted to have a two-line prompt basically and sort of dynamically so I just found it easier to you know uh, disable the override for that. So on to this history settings portion. Um, as you can see I have these his control, his size, his file size, and his depend. And what those do um, as you can see here, it, the ignore both is just preventing duplicate commands from being saved as well as any commands that are starting with space. Um, we're just setting the max number of commands saved in both his size and his file respectively. And the shopped or shell option is what's going to append to the history instead of overwriting um, every shell sessions uh, that we have. So uh, over here, the check wind size and case glob uh, it's basically just making sure that whenever we are adjusting our terminal the uh, script is constantly you know looking for that uh, as well and making sure that any file names will be case insensitive so I'm not sure really when you can mess that up but you never know I just kind of put that there just in case um, these color support color commands uh, this is just what's going to let us have um, like LS and grep when you use that and you see a highlighted of color it's just kind of pulling and uh, making sure that if that directory is there or that file sorry um, it's pulling from that and then moving on to the bash completion section um, this is what's going to load our bash features um, like tab completion and stuff like that so finally the final part which I kind of already covered was just making sure that we are using the attach um, like I said at the end of our script so that we don't run into any issues as far as uh, loading it and from there we are pretty much done we're just going to need to source or uh, equally you can just exit out the terminal but uh, you can see here that we have now a two-line prompt a the user is highlighted as well as the host name and our directory will change dynamically so for instance ls um, you can see now that directories are highlighted blue and something like a text file is um, unhighlighted to kind of show some contrast and as an honesty check just to show that we are indeed running bash um, here you go and yeah it's pretty much it uh, you know it's going to remember old commands um, like we have set so you can see if I just press my right arrow key it will autocomplete and I am able to run this command um, and then yeah I mean that's pretty much it you will get some uh, resizing issues sometimes uh, I could not figure out a workaround just because uh, something to do with the two line prompt where the cursor placement um, would be getting confused so I, I was not able to figure that out um, 
and let's see let's we can show i have kitty as well here and the same thing just showing you that it works across uh, multiple terminal instances uh, we are able to run these features um, let's see what else do i have make that a little bigger so again uh, let's see about this resizing issue but once you clear it resets the thing so uh, let's go to ls shell uh, same thing you can see the directories are highlighted blue so let's cd into desktop ls and then you'll see here as well the i have whatever um, active directory we're in it will show our subpath so that pretty much covers the point of the video i just wanted to go over um you know the setup guide and as well as kind of introduce the channel that i wanted to make um I have a couple of other things here that I wanted to make some videos over. Uh, for instance, I've been playing around with um, Arch on a separate computer and just kind of want to go over uh, as I get the configurations and all that set up. Um, I'll be able to make some videos on that. Um, and then general Linux, cybersecurity, or whatever kind of life things that I um, kind of feel like making. So. Hopefully you guys uh, learned something from it or, you know, as a disclaimer, I'm <laughs> by no means an expert. So, you know, if I made any mistakes, please feel free to uh, correct me below. But yeah, thank you for your time.